Hey guys, this is Trenchy, back again to bring you another video. This time we are doing a tag called The Dark Mutters of Horror Tag, created by Queenie Todd. I was tagged by Jen's Reviews from the Grave, aka Jen and Christian. Both great channels, I will leave links below. Now let's hop into this tag, shall we? Number one, what makes a dark mutter in a horror film for you? Why are horror mutters so scary and archetyped? Okay, so the two things that make the the horror mother, um, the horror mother so uh, scary for me is one, um, that it's a mom. Now the mom's supposed to be the the guardian angel, so to speak. The mom's supposed to be the protective one. Yes, the father is too, but the mom has more of the bond with the child since they've carried the child in their stomach. They've they pretty much cared for the child before birth, you know, they cared to, for the child longer. They've had the they've had the child growing inside of them. Um and usually moms and women in general are more of the nurturing type. Not saying men aren't too, but you're more likely to see a man become more dark especially if you go by the media um it's usually the man who is the abusers or the evil ones um especially early on the man was usually the villain and the woman was like the hero especially if you look at horror in general mostly it's men it there's a lot of men killing people and the who's the who's the one that stops them the woman look at um friday the 13th alien nightmare on elm street um, you go on and on. Um, well, Alien has a monster, but still, the, the woman is the hero in that. Um, that was a bad choice, but you know what I mean. Um, and two, the wom the mom, more so than the father, the father as well, but the mom can shape the, the, child into a monster as well the mom has a lot of um influence over the child if you look at some of the greatest horror villains jason his mom died that's why he kills people norman bates because of his mom the cane from see no evil because of his mom he's the way he is um dude i had way more and i just <laughs> once i did this tag i have a brain fart but um, the Firefly family, because of their, um, you can link that back because of their growing up the way they were raised by Mama Firefly and Hugo as well, but Mama Firefly's influence on her children. Um, Letterface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the new one, uh, Letterface is the way he is, is because of Verna Sawyer's teaching, because of Letterface's mom's teaching. You can link a lot of these disturbing icons of horror back to the way they were raised by their mother. Their mother has kind of created some of these great iconic villains. And that's why and that's why I think so scary is one, not only can they be vicious monsters when they're supposed to be angels, but two, they can create vicious monsters themselves and bring them into the world. Uh, number two, what is your favorite unstable mother in horror? It has to be the mother from the people under the stairs. She's fucking nuts. She keeps children in this... She keeps children locked under the house. She tortures them if they don't end up being the way she wants them. She mutilates them and throws them away. She fucks her brother. Um, this woman's just fucking nuts and um, very very unstable very not there she's very very nuts and one of the most entertaining mothers to watch in the horror genre and what and what's great about this film is this film's a fun film but it's also a dark heavy film very heavy he covers some heavy subjects but it's also fun and light at the same time and disturbing it mixes so many feels and the mother from this is is part of that like sometimes she's very fun to watch sometimes she's very disturbing and heavy to watch and just disturbs your heart what she does and 
that's why she has to be my favorite and stable mother. So that's my number two. Um, number three. Or unstable horror mom. Well, this one is your favorite disturbing horror mom. Which horror mom disturbed you the most? I got two. I got Margaret White from Carrie. Because one. You can kind of see where Margaret came from. You can kind of guess in her childhood how she was raised. She was raised to be very Catholic. And then she decided to be loose. She fucked a man. The man let her down. That led her back into her Christianity thinking her she was sin. And that all this was wrong. And that her daughter was sin. Just having her daughter existing was sin. And she blamed her daughter for her own mistakes. And fed her insane ideology onto her father, onto her daughter, creating her daughter. I don't think Carrie would have been the, as outcasted as she was if her mother was at least halfway normal, or at least normal. Because I believe some of this hate that's put on Carrie from the kids is actually because of her mother is because of how the reputation of her mother that kind of went on to Carrie and then Carrie being meek and not tr trusting people not wanting to open up to people because of that's the way her mother has put into her um that kind of also led to Carrie being an outcast and led to the to the in the end what Carrie did kind of becoming a monster so to speak kind of just a murderer and um yeah, the the fact that Margaret White did this to her daughter, I know she thought she was doing the right thing, but a lot of it was spite. And the fact that she did this and created her into a monster, I think, uh, just disturbs me to the core. And my second pick was Aunt Martha from Sleepaway Camp, because, yes, we don't really see her, but... The implications of what she did is disturbing. She took this little boy and forced him to be something he wasn't. She she made this little boy live with this secret his whole life. And it was so bad that even his closest friend, his cousin Ricky, who was kind of like a brother to him slash her, um, didn't know about it. The fact that this kid had to hide his identity and be this Angela character that he wasn't. And that he had to hide the fact that he was a man and he had, you know, man parts. And he, he that has to be a lot for a child. That has to weigh on you. And the fact that she did that and turned Angela into this um kind of quiet mousy kid who doesn't really trust people again who doesn't really want to get close to people because of this secret that's weighed on him and into the mentally disturbed character we see in the rest of the film series Martha really created Angela she made Angela the way she is in a way yes Angela might have went that route anyways but I do believe that Martha was the one that created Angela and that she should be given more credit as a villain than she's very underrated because everybody remembers Angela, but we don't really think about Martha. Yet Martha caused all of this. Martha was the problem. If what, what was his name like Bobby or some shit, if Bobby just got to be Bobby and didn't have to be Angela then maybe no one would have died. Then maybe. The end, the sleepaway camp would have never happened, you know? There would have been no killer. But no. Martha had, or, yeah, Martha had to be like, no, I need a boy, and I need a girl, and force this boy to be something he wasn't. And yeah, he, she created a monster, and that's disturbing just to do that to a child, to take away a child's free will, to force them to be something they're not. I find that utterly disturbing. 
and, and to put, put that responsibility on a kid, to put that pressure on a kid, to hide their, to hide who they are, to, to change them, is just fucked up. So yeah, that's why my two for most disturbing are Margot White and Aunt Martha. For who is the most um, sympathetic of the Dark Mothers? I have two. One is Pamela Voorhees. Now, Pamela Voorhees, the only reason why she's doing what she did, yes, she's taking it on the wrong people, and yes, what she's doing is wrong, but she's doing it for her kid. And two, I think Pamela is mentally ill. I do think she suffers from maybe some schizophrenia or something, just the way she acts. When we first see her, she seems very out of it, very, like, at some parts, it seems like she's hallucinating, like when her son's talking through her. Um, I do think she may suffer from some mental illnesses, because she does seem very not there. Um, and you can feel for her, man. You know, her kid should have been better taken care of. And yes, these are the wrong people that you should be taking on on. But you can see, you know why she's doing it. She's doing it because not only for her kid, but... She doesn't want any other kids to go through this as well. They don't say that outright, but that makes sense. Like, if you think about it, like, why would you keep killing people around this camp if they didn't do it? Well, what if you're trying to protect the future generations of children from ne neglectful counselors? And yes, not all counselors were negle neglectful like Alice. These, these counselors would have probably been decent, but... Pamela doesn't know that, and again, I believe she has some sort of mental illness. Um, and I also have a second pick for this, which is um, Diana from Lights Out. Now, Diana, uh, I believe she suffers from some mental illnesses as well. Um, she chooses to keep this demon monster that she sees as a friend around with her, even putting her children in danger because the, she feels like this is her friend this is part part of her and she keeps her around in her memory and she loves her friend you know she loves her friend and she wants to keep her around and she doesn't realize the danger she's putting upon her two kids till the very end when diana finally makes the final sacrifice she wakes up and realizes that this monster is not her friend anymore her friend is gone and all is left is this demon presence and that her kids her kids shouldn't have to deal with this her kids are more important than this being than this entity than this memory that she keeps around. So she does the only thing she knows how to protect her children. She grabs a gun and she shoots herself in the head, destroying the monster because the monster was only there because of her. And it's been a while since I've seen this film, but that's how I remember it, is that the monster was there because it was she was keeping it around with her memory and stuff and um it's really just a sad scene it's really tragic especially since this woman obviously has some mental issues and you get why she kept the monster around so long and it's really sad she had to die to protect her children but that's why i think she makes you the most sympathetic because she a lot of a lot of mothers on this list, I don't know if they would do that if they would if they would kill themselves for for their children. And yeah, it's getting really dark here, man. It's getting really dark. I'm getting a little emotional on on this video. Um but yeah, it's it's really fucked. Man, Queenie, you're making me feel, man. Damn. This tag is really fucking me up. Okay, we're, we're gonna go to number five. Who is the goriest of the Dark Mother? 
and I would say Roof from the girl next door. Roof, this is a story based off a book, which I've never read, but I heard it's really good. And um, just, it's also lightly based off the, loosely based off the Sylvia Likings case. Um, this woman is fucked up. This woman is vicious. She is a hater of other women. Um, and she taking care of these two daughters. They are not her daughters, but what makes this so vicious is what she does to these girls. She mutilates them. She starves them. She has her other kids and kids from the neighborhood. She gives them a permission to abuse and rape and burn her. And she even tries to cut out the older sister's clitoris. Um, she abuses them mentally with words. She, Like I said, she starves them. She physically abuses them. She always takes the boys' side. She has the boys abuse them. She's always calling them sluts. She's yelling at them for things they can't do. The one girl's disabled. And she's trying to get clothes off the line. And she like yells at them. Yells at her and calls her a, 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 a bitch. And just a waste of space. Even though she's disabled. And she's, she's fucking disabled. And she can't get the stuff done. And she's like yelling at them. And this is one of the. It's not like. Gory, gory, but just the stuff she does to this kid's so fucked, it's so gory. Just between the mental abuse, the physical abuse, how real it gets. She's starving these kids. This girl has to go to the little boy and ask for money so she can get a burger so she can eat because she's starving. She's, she's actually starving. It's like, it's so real. It feels m more real than most of the stuff on this list and it's just hard to watch it's a really good movie i there's another one that's supposed to be even worse but this one's really hard to watch and it just it's, just, it's something else man it's you gotta see the girl next door roof is just such a gory, violent, psychological, horrible woman. She's such an abuser on so many levels, and it's, it's fucking crazy, man. So yeah, I choose Roof for the most glorious. Six, who's the most maternal of horror moms? I have two again. I have Mama Firefly. From House of Thousand Corpses Double Rejects. Um, Mama Firefly really cares about her kids. She loves her kids. She loves Baby. She loves Otis. She loves RJ. She loves T Tiny. She loves all her kids. Uh, and you can see it. Um, like when she's getting tortured by the sheriff. She never gives up where they are. She. She. You know. She talks back to him. She stays strong. When the kids are leaving the house. Um. She lets Otis and Baby escape, and she stays with her dying son, RJ, who was just shot in the head, and she just holds him and cradles him and kind of is like the distraction while Otis and Baby escape. Instead of trying to um, run for her own life, she stays with her kid and comforts him while he's dying and lets her other two escape. That's a very maternal mom. Um, say what you want about Mama Firefly. The way she raised the kids was fucked up. She's a slut. She's a whore. She's fucking psychotic. But she loves her kids. And she just wants the best for them. Even if the best for them is torturing people in their house and being psychotic assholes. But um, she does love her kids. And my second pick for this is Berna Sawyer from Letterface. Again, another fucked up mom, but... She loves her kids, man. She loves um, Nubbins and Drayton and um, Letterface. Um, it breaks her heart when her kids are taken away from the police. And um, she does everything in her power to get them back. And when she gets them back, she makes sure that she'll never lose them again. And yes, she makes her kids cut people open with chainsaws. But that's, in her fucked up head, that's for their own protection. Um, 
Verna believes that outsiders are bad and she doesn't want her kids being corrupted. So she keeps them away and keeps them locked in this dark, terrible world, you know. <laughs> this dark, fucked up world um, of cannibalism and murder. But that's... She believes for her own kids' protection in a weird, fucked up way. Keeping outsiders away. Um, it's really fucked. This movie... Uh, her, her mindset's really fucked, but she does love her kids, and she does everything to keep her kids, and take care of her kids, and she, she loves her kids to death. She just wants her kids to be with her, and, like any mother should. So, yeah, I pick, um, Mother, Fly, mother Firefly and Bird Sawyer for this one, because they're both very maternal. Say what they you want about their parenting skills, but they they love their kids. There's no lie, they love their kids. Uh, Pamela, too, but I already used her for sympathetic. Uh, seven. Why is horror the best genre to tackle this heavy subject? Well, horror, you can do a lot of things with this subject. I don't think most will. You could do, you could show very gory mothers. You could show very psychological mothers. You can give it a fun feel like um people under the stairs does you can get really fucked up and gory and very real with um the girl next door like the girl next door does you can show someone you can show the monsters that are birthed out of the dark mother like um the psycho series does or the friday the fair team series does in a way um or the, or the House of Thousand Courses Devil Reject series does. Like, you can tackle a lot with horror. Horror is probably one of the most um, flexible genres. You can do a lot with this. You can mix in horror and comedy. You can mix in horror and romance. You can mix in horror and action. Horror and drama. Horror is very flexible and... It always works more than some of these other combinations. You know, horror seems to be one of the most flexible genres out there. And it can handle, it can tackle heavy subjects, but also keep them light in a way and fun while also tackling heavy subjects at the same time. And I think horror brings in a lot of people uh, more than some of these other things because some people get bored by genre dramas and um I know a lot of people like comedies but it would be hard to tackle a dark mother in a comedy and keep it serious um and action isn't for everybody but everybody a lot of people seem to come towards horror all ages kids teenagers adults older people a lot of people seem to be drawn towards horror horror seems to go all across the boards um the only other one I can think of is comedy, but it, it's kind of hard to tackle the dark mutter in comedy. Um, and that's why I think that horror can reach so many audiences, so, mu so much different audiences with this message. And like I said, it's very flexible, so I think that's why it's the best genre to do this. Um, yeah. And uh, that's the end of the tag. That was all some questions. Uh, thank you to Jen's Reviews from the Grave for tagging me. Thank you for Queenie Todd for creating this. I will leave you the link, like you said, um, to do. I will leave you the link on your video. I know this is very long, but, dude, you, you took me down a ride. You took me down a rabbit hole, man. You saw me. I had to wipe my eyes a little there. Uh, shit was getting too real. But yeah, um, I guess I gotta tag some people now. Um, I guess I'll tag, uh, did Mark do this yet? I will tag Mark of Horror. I know Hops did this. Um, I'll tag Mark of Horror. I will tag, hey, isn't that Devon Graham? I don't think you'll see this, but I'll tag him. I'll tag uh, uh, Corey Gore. 
and hmm, maybe I'll tag. Uh, Midnight Raven? Yeah, maybe I'll tag Midnight Raven. Uh, and if you want to do this, she said the tag's open. So, you want to do this, do this. Just say Trenchy sent you. You know, if you got it from this video. So, yeah. Um, just say I tagged you. Give me some credit, bro. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. This is... Trunchy signing off. Stay frosty. Hope you guys have a great day. Um, damn it, I said my catchphrase too soon. Stay frosty. This is Trunchy signing off. Beep, boop.